I like this new pulpit. Very nice. Mike made it for Carson. It's got even a little cup holder up here. <laughs> nice. I'm short, vertically challenged, so I'll probably just kind of stand beside it. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, uh, Pastor Carson has been doing a series on Sunday school stories. Those Bible stories that you may have heard as a child in Sunday school or in vacation Bible school. And we've heard about Adam and Eve. We heard about Cain and Abel. We heard about Noah, all of those folks from the Old Testament. And we heard about Zacchaeus from the New Testament. And today we're going to look at another story that comes from the Gospels in the New Testament. And this one is about a little boy who shared his lunch. A little boy who shared his lunch with a whole crowd of people. As a child, I really liked this story because it used a child. It used a little boy as an example. Not some adult, not some big person in, in the church or in the synagogue, but a child. A child was used. God used a child in this story. A child who had faith. A child who had faith and who was willing to share what he had with other people. And it was because of that little boy's faith, Jesus did an extraordinary thing. Jesus did an extraordinary thing because of this little boy and his faith. The story is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. And so I'm going to read it here for you today. After this, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. Some called it Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him, attracted by the miracles they had seen him do among the sick. When he got to the other side, he climbed a hill and he sat down, surrounded by his disciples. It was nearly the time for the feast of Passover, kept annually by the Jews. When Jesus looked out and saw that a large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, Where can we buy bread to feed these people? He said this to stretch Philip's faith. He already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 silver pieces wouldn't buy enough to buy bread for each person here in this place. Then one of his disciples, it was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But that's a drop in the bucket for a crowd like this. Jesus said, Well, make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place, and they sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread, and having given thanks, he gave it to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish, and all ate as much as they wanted. When the people had eaten their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. They went to work and filled 12 large baskets with leftovers from the five barley loaves. The people realized that God was at work among them in what Jesus had done. They said, this is the prophet for sure. God's prophet right here in Galilee. This story of the feeding of the 5,000 is actually found in all four of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's one of the very few things that's included in all four Gospels. So it's important. It's an important story. Um, I, I chose to read it today from the Gospel of John because John specifically mentions this little boy. The other Gospel writers don't include him in the story. But I think that the inclusion of the little boy is important. Children were not held in high regard in that day. We are grateful we have children here in this place. We hold them in high regard. But children were not held in high regard in that day. In fact, that little boy technically was not one of the 5,000 people who were accounted for that day. 
The number 5,000 in Scripture included just the men. Not the women, not the children, just the men. Had those women and children been counted, that number certainly would have been much higher. And so we have here this little boy, this child, who was not even considered to be worth counting in the crowd, who then goes and offers his sack lunch, his menial provisions to Jesus. He offers them to Jesus, and Jesus performs a miracle with those five small barley loaves and two fish. And they fed 5,000 people, plus, that's 5,000 men, plus the women and the children. And there were 12 baskets left over from this little boy's gift. Now, I've heard that some commentators have said that Jesus didn't really feed. It wasn't this miracle where he was able to feed all of these people, the 5,000 men plus women and children, with just this small loaf of bread and two fish. Instead, they say that when Jesus begins to break the bread, all of the people in the crowd then begin to share from their lunches, too. They start to share with one another. And I believe that there may be some truth to that. That in itself is a real miracle, <laughs> too, getting people to share with one another. <laughs> but that little boy in the crowd was the first one to share. He was the example. He set that example for the rest of the crowd. I think he had to have some pretty serious faith to think that his five small barley loaves and two fish would even make a difference in a crowd that size. Did you ever think about that? How would these five loaves, two fish, make a difference in a crowd that size? Have you thought about your own resources, your own financial resources, your own ability to serve in the church, and wondered what God could ever do with something seemingly insignificant. Don't be discouraged. Keep your hands open, because we're going to learn five lessons from this little boy this morning. The first lesson is that God invites us to participate in his mission. God invites us to participate in his mission. In this story, Jesus asks Philip, where can we buy bread for these people? Jesus has invited Philip to participate. Philip, Philip doesn't answer so well, though. <laughs> he responds, Two piece, 200 pieces of silver would not be enough to feed these people. Not even for people to have such a small little piece of bread. 200 pieces of silver was the equivalent of about six months' wages in that time. Now, Jesus really wasn't surprised by Philip's response. Scripture tells us that he did this to stretch Philip's faith. He invited Philip to participate in his ministry this ministry of feeding people. And evidently, that little boy must have been in earshot because Andrew then chimes in that this little boy is offering his five loaves and two fish. Five loaves and two fish. Andrew doesn't quite believe either because Andrew says, <laughs> that's a drop in the bucket for this crowd. And yet, the little boy must have overheard that invitation and he offers his food, his little sack lunch to the disciples because he wants to help. The boy learned that God invites us to participate in his mission. The second lesson that we can learn from the little boy is that God is all about multiplication. <laughs> Taking something small and making it bigger multiplying it for God's purposes. As the boy handed his meal to the disciples and to Jesus, 
he might have wondered what difference these five loaves and two fish would have made among such a large crowd. It wouldn't have been surprising, surprising even if the little boy had thought, maybe they don't even want my five loaves <laughs> and two fish. His meal was small. The need was great. But then Jesus took a hold of that food, and he began to break it into pieces. The small meal turned into this feast that was more than enough. <laughs> more than enough to fill the stomachs of that large crowd. Jesus takes what seems to be insignificant or insufficient and uses it to accomplish a greater purpose. We see examples of God doing this all throughout Scripture, all throughout history. We see back in the Old Testament with Abraham and Sarah, this childless couple who became parents and then populated the world with, with descendants more numerous than the stars. In Acts, we see that God uses this small group of people who are meeting together for prayer in a house to start the global church that has lasted for 2,000 years. Our God can take whatever is given in faith and multiply it. <laughs> Multiply it for its impact to be something that is unfathomable, something beyond anything that we could have ever imagined, and use it that way for God's kingdom, for God's purposes. God is all about multiplication. The little boy learned that lesson that day. The third lesson that we can learn from the little boy is that Mission and multiplication require trust. We've sung about that already today. Brendan's mentioned that today. At some point, this little boy had to release the food that he possessed. At some point, he had to settle in his heart and in his mind that this food was no longer his to hold. At some point, he had to determine that he was not the one who dictated how this was now going to be, to be used. Was he hungry in that moment? He probably was hungry and wondered, oh, if I give this away, how will my own needs be met? Did he wonder that? How will my own needs be met? It's pretty likely <laughs> that he wondered that. But he released the food. He allowed it to be used. He opened his hands anyway. So what about us? <laughs> Why would we open our hearts? Why would we open our hands and release our possessions and our time and all the things that we hold on to? It's about trust. It's about trust. Giving and holding on to our possessions and our time loosely requires trust. Trust that God will use those resources for God's purposes. Trust that God will care for our needs in the process. The little boy with this meal saw that a few fish and some loaves of bread, once he let go, got multiplied and were used in a miraculous way. In Jesus' hands, this small, insignificant thing became great. But it took an act of trust to get that small, insignificant thing, that meal, into Jesus' hands. Mission and multiplication The little boy learned that lesson that day. The fourth lesson that we can learn from the little boy in this story is that mission and multiplication require sacrifice. Not just trust, but sacrifice. The boy made a great sacrifice. Not much like, much like the widow that we see in Scripture in the New Testament. The widow who gave her two small coins in the temple or in the synagogue. <laughs> 
The boy gave everything he had. He gave his whole lunch. He didn't hold back a piece of bread or one of the fish. He gave his whole lunch. He gave all that was in his possession. And that act could have been painful for him. Well, maybe not physically painful. He might have had maybe some stomach growling or something like that. But, but mentally or emotionally, possibly, he went from being comfortable knowing that he had a lunch, knowing that his needs would be met, to potentially being hungry and uncomfortable, having no sustenance for that day. That's how sacrifice works. Sacrifice drives out comfort. Sacrifice is uncomfortable. But sacrificial giving of our resources and of ourselves and of our time is what we find in Scripture. We find that celebrated in Scripture. When we looked at the story of Abel a few weeks ago, God looked favorably upon Abel's sacrifice or Ab Abel's offering because he sacrificed his best. He didn't give God some scraps. He gave his best. In the New Testament, Jesus pointed out the widow in the temple with her two coins because she gave all that she had. She gave her best. Biblical giving of ourselves, of our time, of our resources is sacrificial. And God uses sacrifice to shape the giver's heart and to advance God's kingdom. Mission and multiplication require sacrifice. The boy learned that lesson that day. And the fifth and the last lesson that we can learn from the little boy in the story is that Mission and multiplication are ultimately God's work, not our work. The boy handed over his meal. It was certainly an act of trust, we've said. It's an act of sacrifice. But the boy himself did not feed the 5,000 people. The disciples, they certainly didn't feed the 5,000 people either. The boy and his disciples were simply participants. <laughs> we said that in lesson number one. God invites us to participate. The boy and the disciple were participants in God's work and mission. The people were fed by Jesus. <laughs> they weren't fed by the boy. The people were fed by Jesus. Stomachs were full because this whole act of God took place. Apart from that, the people would have remained hungry. They wouldn't have been able to do much with five loaves and two fish. But Jesus' act showed how the boy was able to participate in God's work. The same is true for us. God wants us to trust God with our possessions and with our time and to do work with our work to advance God's mission, to advance God's kingdom. But ultimately, it's not our possessions, it's not our time, it's not our work that are the mission or what will cause multiplication. We give, we work, knowing that it is God. It's God who acts. It's God's mission. It's God's work that causes the multiplication. We're certainly eager, we hope, to participate in that mission. But it's God. God is the one who multiplies. God is the one who made that miracle happen that day. Mission and multiplication are God's work, not our work. We're just called to participate and invited to participate so that God can use us for great things. The boy learned that lesson. The boy who gave up his sack lunch, <laughs> the five barley loaves and two fish, learned a lot 
that day. He learned that God invites us to participate in mission and that God is all about multiplication. He learned that multiplication and mission require trust and require sacrifice. And he learned that while we all participate in the action and we need to participate in the action, it is ultimately God who is the one who does the work. God is the one who advances the kingdom. God is the one who does miraculous things when we allow ourselves to be part of his work. So whenever it is you feel like you don't have much to offer, much money or much time, much work, many skills, remember the little boy with the five loaves, five little barley loaves and two fish. Remember what he learned that day. Trust God with your resources and let God be the one who multiplies those resources in ways that you could never have imagined. Amen. Amen.